Picture this, giant rocks tumbling down a volcano, making their way into the ocean, creating a massive wave taller than anything we've ever seen. This might happen if the Helena slump on the Hawaiian Big Island collapses into the water. The Kilauea volcano nearby is not sleeping. It erupted in 2018, usually bringing earthquakes with it. These earthquakes move the rocks on the volcano's slopes, called slumps, and the Helena slump is the most famous one. Back in 1868, the Helena slump's shift caused a huge wave, reaching up to 60 feet. Even scarier, about 110,000 years ago, at least according to some, a slide here led to a super-strong earthquake and a mega-tsunami over a thousand feet tall. Scientists worry this could happen again, with the wave covering all of Hawaii and reaching the coast of North and South America. Geologists try to comfort us, saying it's not likely to happen soon, but when it eventually does, it'll be really bad. Just know for now, it's too early for that. Okay, have a nice day. Yellowstone National Park in the western USA is known for its beautiful views, especially the colorful Grand Prismatic Spring. However, it's also a massive supervolcano, different from regular ones like Kilauea. A Yellowstone eruption would be thousands of times more powerful, spewing tons of rocks and rivers of lava, causing ash clouds that can stop air travel for weeks. The eruption would cover about 40 square miles, roughly half the size of Washington, D.C., in lava flows and magma rocks. The most significant danger is the volcanic ash, rising miles above and spreading in every direction, destroying crops and buildings, blocking out the sun, and causing a drastic drop in temperature, possibly leading to an artificial winter. While regular volcanoes can lower temperatures worldwide by a few degrees, a supervolcano like Yellowstone may potentially cause a new ice age. Luckily, the chances of Yellowstone erupting soon or at all are extremely low. There have only been three supervolcano eruptions in Earth's history, and there's no evidence this disaster will repeat. Scientists estimate the probability at 0.004%, lower than the chances of an asteroid causing widespread destruction. As for dinosaurs, if they could talk and were still around, they'd probably warn us about the very real asteroid threat. According to NASA scientists, they've identified and tracked 90% of significant-sized near-asteroids, and they don't pose a concern. However, there's that remaining 10% lurking in the great unknown. What makes it trickier is that asteroids can alter their path due to the gravitational pull of other celestial bodies, potentially putting Earth in their crosshairs. Now, if a large asteroid, say about a mile across, were to collide with Earth, it would unleash a powerful explosion wiping out multiple big cities in seconds. The impact would also generate a cloud of dust and debris, blocking out the sun and causing a centuries-long winter across the entire planet. Even if the asteroid landed in the ocean, which is more likely, it would create a colossal wave several miles high, wiping coastal cities off the map. The silver lining is that it wouldn't trigger a new ice age. While scientists are fairly confident that such a catastrophic event isn't imminent, they can't completely rule it out. If a large near-asteroid suddenly changes course and heads our way, humanity would need at least five years to prepare. Unfortunately, if it happens unexpectedly, we wouldn't stand much chance against it. But a more likely calamity is right beneath our feet, the San Andreas Fault in California. Scientists say it's ready for a big earthquake, estimating it could happen in the next three decades. When it does, it won't be pleasant, with an expected magnitude of eight, comparable to some of the most devastating quakes in history. This is especially dangerous because California has densely populated cities like Los Angeles and San Francisco, with vulnerable high-rise buildings. The worst-case scenario would break the ground apart, destroying buildings, farms, and changing the landscape. Scientists believe there's a 7% chance of this quake happening in the next 30 years, leaving a 93% chance it won't occur in our lifetime. There's another earthquake hazard not too far away, the mega thrust in Chile. The country sits above a subduction zone where tectonic plates meet. Stress builds up due to their continuous movement, leading to major earthquakes. Scientists are concerned that recent quakes might be preparing the area for a significant one. They believe a great earthquake is due before the century ends, potentially devastating coastal areas. 
Even smaller quakes in Chile have caused tsunamis, and a larger one could create an incredibly high wave. The good news is that Chile is better prepared now, and geologists believe people will have time to evacuate before a major earthquake strikes. In September 1859, astronomer Richard Carrington observed a bright flare on the sun's surface, later realizing it was a solar storm. The energy from that flare reached Earth, causing northern lights and burning telegraph lines worldwide, an event now known as the Carrington Event. Various natural disasters are highlighted, such as the Boxing Day Tsunami in Indonesia, the Arctic Triumph Mega Tsunami, the Vajon Dam Mega Tsunami in Italy, the Mount St. Helena's Mega Tsunami in the USA, Alaska's Lituya Bay Tsunami, and the East Mikai Volcano Collapse Tsunami in Hawaii, the Yucatan Asteroid Tsunami, and hurricanes Mitch and Allen causing widespread damage. Each event presents a unique and potentially catastrophic scenario. After tearing down Barbados, the great hurricane moves on, stripping the bark off trees in Martinique and St. Lucia. This horrifying natural disaster lasts for six days. Hurricane Dorian becomes the most powerful tropical cyclone to hit the Bahamas, flattening most structures and sweeping them into the sea. Hurricane Wilma occurs in the Caribbean Sea near Jamaica, turning into the most intense hurricane ever recorded in the Atlantic Ocean. Hurricane Patricia starts as a regular storm and rapidly becomes a Category 5 hurricane within 24 hours, making it the world's most intense tropical cyclone. The Kamkatcha earthquake happens 80 miles away from Kamkatcha's shores, producing tsunamis with catastrophic waves up to 60 feet high. The Valparaiso earthquake in Chile triggers a tsunami, wiping out 620 miles of Chile's coastline. The Tohoku earthquake in Japan moves the country's main island, shifting the planet's axis and increasing its rotation speed. The disaster triggers a tsunami with waves as high as 133 feet that travel six miles inland. The Indian Ocean earthquake in Sumatra causes an undersea earthquake, vibrating the planet and setting off earthquakes worldwide. The Alaska Good Friday earthquake becomes the most powerful recorded in North America, lasting 4 minutes and 38 seconds. It causes a 600-meter-long crack, landslides, and a 27-foot tsunami. The Valdivia earthquake in Chile affects an area the size of California, triggering tsunamis that reach Hawaii, Japan, the Philippines, Australia, and New Zealand. Various tornadoes, such as the Alina tornado, considered the world's largest based on width, the Purville tornado in the U.S., and the Bridge Creek tornado with a peak width of 1 to 1.5 miles, cause significant damage. The Manitoba tornado in Canada lasts nearly three hours, but miraculously misses towns along its path. The scenario then transitions to a fictional future with consecutive cataclysms, imagining the challenges survivors face in a world affected by continuous disasters. The hurricane blows volcanic ash in different directions, clearing the air, but the fire rages on. Putting on a gas mask, you notice a lot of smoke, and the hurricane's sudden appearance seems unusual. Remembering that hurricanes form when warm, moist air collides with the sea surface, you realize there must be water nearby. Thirsty and wanting to cool down, you hear a loud sound behind you. Turning around, you witness a massive wave approaching the fire. Without panic, you put on a life jacket, diving mask and fins. The wave knocks you off your feet, but you grab onto a passing tree, waiting for the flood to be replaced by another natural disaster. Sailing for five minutes under a stormy sky, you try to row south, facing cold temperatures. Eventually, you reach icy terrain, experiencing blizzards and snow. Using a space blanket made from foil and insulating materials, you navigate through the snowstorm, collecting snow to melt later. Suddenly, the snow turns to water, and you find yourself on hard, dry ground. Checking your watch, you see five minutes have passed, and the sky is covered with black clouds again. Shielding yourself with a metal plate, you endure heavy rain and hail, maintaining a calm demeanor. As the hail ends, you use steel spokes wrapped with copper wire to create a lightning rod. Lightning strikes the rod, and you wait for the storm to end before dismantling the rod and continuing your journey. Facing earthquakes, carbon dioxide, fires, floods, snowfall, tsunamis and lightning, you navigate your way through various challenges using a compass. After months, you spot a long antenna, marking the entrance to an underground city. The adventure continues with a place mark for entering the city.
That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please let me know by clicking the like button. Do share, write a comment, and don't forget to subscribe so you can catch up my next video.